another club that whose fans are not very optimistic going into um, the start of the season is Chelsea. They're today linked with another new player. Uh, they're now being linked very credibly by Nazir Kinsella with Denzel. I love the name, man. Denzel Dumfries. That sounds like an action movie like star. Do you know what I mean? Um, but uh, Denzel Dumfries now linked to Chelsea um, after, of course, not landing Jules Kunde. This deal is supposedly active, uh, possible and on uh, as things stand. But when you look at Chelsea, I mean, you look at a player like him, first of all, you look at Chelsea's summer so far. Do you think they're in as big a mess as some of their fans believe and as rivals are saying with Chelsea? Or do you think, you know, they'll pick up some players like Dumfries? You know, they're also in um, the other sort of big story today is that Frankie Jong is now open to leaving um, Barcelona, but to join Chelsea over the Man United. I mean, if they were to bring in Frankie Jong and Dumfries between now and the end of the season that would really turn the mood around at Chelsea? Or, or do you disagree? Do you feel like they actually are looking like they're in a mess? Yeah, but people, it's the same again. People love to put them in a mess. Every time they're, they're, there's something going on at Chelsea, and there's always something going on at Chelsea, they always pull a trophy out of the bag. It's like, oh, they sack, they sack their manager, and then Di Matteo wins them the Champions League. Then they sack this manager, Tuchel comes in, bang, Champions League. Like, If people were sitting there writing off Chelsea, <laughs> you're crazy, mate. Yeah, they're the most successful club in England in the last 15 years for a reason. And even though they've got new ownership, a new hierarchy, some of the players are old, they're coming to the end. A lot of players are um, just sticking around for the last season, don't want to leave, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And they're maybe struggling to sign players. Um, it's funny because Arsenal fans laughed at, at Chelsea because Rafinha went to Barca. Well, he rejected us as well. <laughs> right. Do you know what I mean? But they've, they've signed Sterling. And as much as I don't particularly rate him that highly, is what they needed, a goal-scoring winger. Yeah, nil bad goals. They're not in a mess. They're not in a mess. And and if people think they're in a mess, I'd love to see at the end of the season when they finish above us, which they will, the excuses for a team that are in a mess finishing above the manager that's got everything he's wanted right? and everything's rosy in Arsenal's garden because they will finish above Arsenal. I, I'm, I'll put money on that. They'll finish above Arsenal. So I don't think they're in a mess. They're... they're um, They've got the pulling power. They're in the best, uh, the richest part of London. They can pay the wages. They can attract top talent. They've got a top-class manager, and they're the most successful club in England for the last decade and a half. And they're in the Champions League. And Arsenal fans spent all season telling me, if you get Champions League, you can attract better players. <laughs> well, there you go. So they're going to attract some better players by the end of the window, isn't they? Yeah, and they will finish above Arsenal and comfortably in the top four. So they're not in a mess and, and in terms of Arsenal's expectations for a season. Whether they win a trophy or not, I don't know. But if he don't win a trophy, he'll be sacked. I mean, yeah, that's I, the standard. I think with, with, with Chelsea, I feel like... I, I don't think they're in as big a mess as they look. I think Todd Bowley... I mean, they, they, they did a bit of PR today. And I said to the, in, the, in the Football Terrace group chat, I said, now they've missed out on Kunde, I said, within a day... There is going to be an article saying he wasn't really that much of a priority. The manager didn't really rate him, didn't really want him. Lo and behold, the Chelsea tier ones are writing those articles. And it's that that's the sort of stuff that I just don't... I, I do read the articles to see what they're saying, but I don't believe a word of it. However, I believe that Todd Bowley has been very... I think he's just been a little bit too open, a bit too transparent. You know, he's fed stuff into certain journalists. I spoke to a, a journalist on Monday, no, Sunday. I said, mate, what's like... This guy was the guy that, that you know, he, he, one of his articles literally said that um, Chelsea Football Club have beaten Barcelona to the player. Barca have walked away. They're confident. He was told directly by the club, like, we've landed him. It's done. It's over the line. And then it didn't. I think the way they're going around, hijacking deals, the way it's being perceived by the by fans because of all the reports in the media, it's like it's wishy-washy and messy. Where I think that the only thing they're doing different to other clubs is they're not keeping it quiet. Man United do this. Man United are so noisy in the transfer window it, and leave such a large footprint that you see all the mistakes and the problems and the players that you didn't get. Everybody else just does it quietly. But the process is still very much the same, if you get where I'm coming from. Like, this is just the way these things kind of work. I don't necessarily think Chelsea have suddenly this summer started behaving very differently from 95% of other clubs. And the reason I say that is because the feedback from other clubs, even on deals they haven't landed, has been... I look, it was really refreshing. It's nice. It's quick. They come in. They want to get deals over the line. They don't want to sit, spend two months negotiating. They really like it. So it's not as in the industry. It's not being looked at as messy and 
crazy. It just appears that way to football fans because we're kind of not used to sort of seeing it. Do, do you get where I'm coming from? And we, we've had this this season as well because of how much of the media stories have been exposed this year. The amount of fan bases that have had meltdowns. Well, I don't want Rafinha because we're not in, we're not the number one choice. You, I mean, Arsenal signed Gabriel Jesus. You weren't Gabriel Jesus' number one choice in reality because if Pep Guardiola said, listen, I'll make you my main number nine, you'll start for 30, minimum 30 games, you'll start as my main number nine striker, Gabriel Jesus would have would have stayed. <laughs> but right. did you get my point? And that's not a dig on Arsenal. And then we 200 grand a week here when he and doubled his wages. Same as Zinchenko, he was on 20 grand a week. Well, it's, it's, it's how things right. get it's how things get spun right. and get spoken about. Does that make sense? And it's not mm. like, and I'm not saying he did he when he decided he wanted to leave, you were his number one target. But I guarantee if Pep would have said that to him, or well, that's a guarantee, I believe he, he would stay and do that. You know, it, it's like how things get worded all the time. The athletic this afternoon, we'll get on to De Jong in a minute, have said, you know, De Jong doesn't really see Man United as, as that attractive. The way that's being spun by the headlines now is, is Frankie De Jong says he doesn't want to join Man United. Well, they're not the same comment. That's not the same thing. Do you know what I mean? I, you know, I don't find Lee very attractive. It doesn't mean he's a free out of ten. You know what <laughs> oh, I mean? You've got better since you've had air back, mate. <laughs> I, I know, mate. I know. I've taken five years off me. Five. But you know, I think I think Chelsea are doing all right. I think Chelsea will sign two or three more players. The, the thing is, though, Terry, is, is like, football fans almost like school kids. Yeah. It's like, ha, Tottenham lost, ha, Tottenham are losing, ha, oh, Tottenham, uh, Chelsea have signed Koulibaly, ha, his legs are gone, ha, ha. Yeah, Koulibaly would be our best centre-back. Right, let's not even debate it. Right? So it's like, ha, ha. It's like, it's so childish and amateurish, like, like little five-year-olds in a playground. Oh, well, if you can't different. see what Arteta's doing, you can jog on to spares. Like, no, ban- 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 I keep saying, we're going to try and introduce something to the terrace this season about, like, banning people with bad, ban- dead banter. And what I mean by that is, like... Well, I'm all right, then. <laughs> no, what I mean is, though, like, calling, like, you know when a joke's been done, then it becomes boring. It's, I'll tell you an example of great banter. Did you see the quote tweet of, of Troops, when Troops said that Saliba is not here to play games? And a Spurs fan quote tweeted and said, well, of course he ain't. He ain't kicked the ball in three years. That's an amazing banter. But when I, I tell you the biggest one that gets to me, the worst response, Twitter should make it an instant ban, is when you make a good point to someone, like someone makes a, a tweet, you make a good point, and they respond with salty. The like the response salty should get you an instant lifetime Twitter ban because it's like you're lowering the intelligence of everybody on the app when all you can respond with is salty. Uh, honestly, yeah, that's, Terry, that's the same crazy. as when I'm sitting there talking about Arsenal and people go, "You're a Spurs fan." It's the same. same yeah, like, thing. I, I, you I haven't got it, an argument to put forward to I, close me down. I would say that. To, I would say that. Like it, it isn't an argument to call Lee a Spurs fan. You're not debunking what he said. I have destroyed Lee live on air countless times because when? no more. Oh, mate, I've ruined you. You know I have. <laughs> no, I, 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 I picture picture it didn't happen till. <laughs> oh, that's it. Do you know what I mean? It's one of them ones. But uh, salty Terry. Yeah, look, see, that's when it's funny when you're responding to me saying it. But it's just like. Come back with a proper response. 